Rosa Parks played a pivotal role in sparking the civil rights movement in the United States through her courageous act of defiance in 1955. By refusing to surrender her seat to a white passenger on a bus in Montgomery, Alabama, she inspired local black leaders to organize the Montgomery bus boycott. This protest, led by a young Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., persisted for over a year and concluded with the U.S. Supreme Court's decision that bus segregation was unconstitutional. This is the story of Rosa Parks. Rosa Louise McCauley was born on February 4, 1913, in Tuskegee, Alabama. When she was two, her family relocated to Pine Level, Alabama, to live with her maternal grandparents. Her brother Sylvester was born in 1915, and soon after, their parents, James and Leona McCauley, separated. Rosa's mother, a teacher, instilled a strong value for education in the family. At the age of 11, Rosa moved to Montgomery, Alabama, where she attended high school at a laboratory school associated with the Alabama State Teachers College for Negroes. She left school at 16, during her junior year, to care for her ailing grandmother and her chronically ill mother. In 1932, at the age of 19, Rosa married Raymond Parks, a self-taught man who was a barber and an active member of the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, or NAACP. Raymond encouraged Rosa to complete her high school education, which she successfully did the following year. Raymond and Rosa, who earned her living as a seamstress, became respected figures within Montgomery's sizable African-American community. However, living alongside white residents in a city dominated by Jim Crow laws was a daily struggle. Black citizens were restricted to attending substandard schools, using designated water fountains and borrowing books only from the Black Library, among other limitations. Despite Raymond's earlier concerns for her safety, Rosa joined the Montgomery chapter of the NAACP in December of 1943 and took on the role of chapter secretary. She collaborated closely with Edgar Daniel Nixon, the chapter president. Nixon, a railroad porter, was well known in Montgomery as a champion for black citizens' voting rights and served as the president of the local branch of the Brotherhood of Sleeping Car Porters Union. On the evening of Thursday, December 1st, 1955, 42-year-old Rosa Parks was heading home from her job at the Montgomery Fair Department Store by bus. Many black residents in Montgomery avoided using municipal buses due to the demanding Negroes in Back policy Yet, black passengers constituted over 70% of the ridership on an average day. That day, Parks was among them. Montgomery law mandated segregation. The front bus seats were reserved for white passengers while black passengers sat in the rear. Although it was customary for bus drivers to demand that black passengers relinquish their seats to white riders, the laws were contradictory. One law enforced segregation, while another, often ignored, prohibited any person from being forced to give up a seat if no other was available. During Parks' commute, a white man was left standing because the seats in the white section were full. The bus driver instructed the first row of the colored section to stand, effectively extending the white section. Three passengers complied. Rosa Parks did not. Two police officers eventually arrived, assessed the situation, and took Parks into custody. Upon her arrest, Rosa Parks used her one phone call to reach her husband. However, the news of her detention spread rapidly, and E.D. Nixon was present when Parks was released on bail that evening. 
Nixon had long sought a brave black individual of impeccable integrity to serve as the plaintiff in a landmark case challenging segregation laws. While sitting in Parks' home, he persuaded Parks, along with her husband and mother, that she was the ideal candidate. Additionally, they conceived another plan. The black residents of Montgomery would boycott the buses on the day of Parks' trial, Monday, December 5th. By midnight, 35,000 flyers were being printed to inform black school children and their parents about the boycott. On December 5th, Parks was convicted of violating segregation laws, received a suspended sentence, and was fined $10 plus $4 in court costs. Meanwhile, the boycott saw unprecedented participation from the black community, exceeding even the most optimistic expectations. In response, Nixon and local ministers formed the Montgomery Improvement Association, or MIA, to oversee the boycott, electing the 26-year-old Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., who was new to Montgomery, as the MIA's president. As the boycott continued, related lawsuits progressed through the courts, reaching the U.S. Supreme Court. The Montgomery bus boycott provoked anger and violence from many white residents, leading to the bombing of Nixon's and Dr. King's homes. Despite the violence, the boycott's leaders and participants remained steadfast drawing significant national and international media attention. On November 13, 1965, the Supreme Court declared bus segregation unconstitutional. The boycott officially ended on December 20th, the day after the court's written order arrived in Montgomery. Throughout the year-long boycott, Parks had lost her job and endured constant harassment but she emerged as a revered figure, earning the title, the mother of the civil rights movement. Facing ongoing harassment and threats after the boycott, Rosa Parks, along with her husband and mother, decided to relocate to Detroit, where her brother lived. In 1965, Parks began working as an administrative aide in Congressman John Conyers Jr.'s Detroit office a position she held until her retirement in 1988. During the late 1970s, Parks endured the loss of her husband, brother, and mother to cancer. In 1987, she co-founded the Rosa and Raymond Parks Institute for Self-Development to support Detroit's youth. After retiring, Parks remained active in civil rights, traveling to support various events and causes. She also authored her autobiography, Rosa Parks, My Story. In 1999, she received the Congressional Gold Medal, the highest civilian honor in the United States, joining notable recipients such as George Washington, Thomas Edison, Betty Ford, and Mother Teresa. Upon her death at age 92 on October 24, 2005, Parks became the first woman in U.S. history to lie in honor at the U.S. Capitol.